Writer's Block, the complete novel by Hank Garner, read to you by the author. Chapter 1 There are few things in life that are worse than looking at a blinking cursor on a blank white screen. I guess it's better than what Mark Twain had to deal with. He just had a blank sheet of paper staring at him, waiting for his scathing social commentary. Twain also didn't have the distractions of being constantly connected to the outside world. Too much information can be crippling. And besides, our robot overlords have trained us to crave the latest updates from the debutante of the moment. But seriously, people have real problems, and here I am worrying about this blank page. That's what makes it worse. I'm just a writer, after all, not a brain surgeon or, or someone that figures out how to bring clean water to some third world country. People tell me that writing is important. I have a stack of letters from adoring readers that give me their tales of how one of my books has helped them through a tough time. I appreciate that. I just don't believe that I deserve it. Thinking like this only makes it worse and the inadequacies pile on. I look at my phone again, dreading the sight of the screen lighting up one more time. My agent hasn't called today, but I know it won't be long. Janet has the patience of Job and is always ready with an encouraging word, but the publisher has been waiting for nearly three months for the manuscript that should have been delivered already. The problem with being successful and adored by readers is that they always want more. And I did leave them hanging at the end of the last book. I owe them the next part of the story. But I don't know how it ends. And that is why I'm staring at this blank screen. A hot cup of tea. That'll help. I go into the kitchen and put the kettle on. I pace around the room waiting for the kettle to heat up. Seems like there's some sort of quaint saying about watching a pot boil or something. Yeah, stupid cliches. I absentmindedly drum my fingers on the keyboard of the old typewriter that I picked up at a garage sale a few weeks ago. The lady obviously didn't know what she had. This was an early 1960s IBM Selectric, the first model. I bought it for five bucks. I thought if nothing else, it would make a great conversation piece. The problem is nobody ever comes over to start a conversation with. Oh well. The kettle whistles and I pour the cup of tea. The steam, the heat, the honey and lemon, they all combine to make a perfect creativity elixir that should start the synapses firing and make the story jump out. But no, it doesn't. The tea is good, delicious in fact, but it doesn't help me figure out what to do with Eli Sampson, my intrepid hero that I left stranded at the end of book two. I knew that I was writing myself into a corner at the end of that book, but when I wrapped it up, I figured that I had plenty of time to figure out what should happen next. Putting off your problems for another day doesn't work, usually. It relieves the immediate pressure, but the problem is still sitting there. Ominous on the horizon. I go back to the office, steaming cup in hand, and do the only thing I know to do. I consult Google. How to fix writer's block. I click search and there's about four bajillion results. Huh. Looks like I'm not the only one. Five hours later and I've completely fallen down the rabbit hole. I've read every conceivable remedy for unleashing your creativity and they're all stupid. I did see an article that offered one piece of hope. The article said to unhinge writer's block you should write something completely different. A palate cleanser, so to speak. So I decide to just type. Just let the letters flow and see what happens. I crack my knuckles, take a deep breath, and don't type. Doesn't feel right. The white screen, the blinking cursor, it still feels like I'm in the same space. The space where the story does not live. I need to find that new space. The space where the story does live. I can't believe I'm talking like some coffee shop poet. I need a new medium. Then it hits me. I go to the kitchen and retrieve the Selectric typewriter. I bring it to the office and place it on the end of the desk. 
I fish out the power cord from the back of the machine and uncoil it. I haven't actually plugged it up. I don't guess I ever thought of actually typing on the old thing. I plug it into the power strip at the back of the desk, slide my chair in front of the old IBM, and make a quick look over it before turning it on. Ribbon is installed. When is the last time I had to worry about a ribbon? The familiar golf ball covered in letters was intact. I feel confident enough to switch it on. I place my fingers on the home keys just like Mrs. Wilson taught me to in the ninth grade. Thinking about her makes me arch my fingers so that only my fingertips are touching. What I am...